Alright, hello and thank you for clicking my link. What I'm about to show you is an image processing algorithm that I was asked to do by a friend to track a mouse in an experiment. So I wrote this in a combination of MATLAB and OpenCV. And so what I first have to do is point it at the folder where the videos are. So, now you see here is the experimental setup. It's a little white box, and she's going to drop the mouse in. Now at the beginning of the experiment, there's an audio pulse at about 1 kilohertz that I have to detect, and that's the beginning of the experiment. So right now in the background, it's listening to the audio stream to find that pulse. And when it does that, it's going to try to find the center of the mouse, and then track its speed. And there you go, the pulse started and now it's tracking. And so now you see the oval around the mouse contour in the upper left video is where I guess the mouse is. And that little circle is what the center point is. And if you look at the graph, that's the speed in pixels per second. And the way that I decide whether the mouse is moving or not is whether it goes above 3500. So you see it thinks it's moving and now it's dipping right around there and now it's not moving. So as you can see it works pretty well. Now behind the scenes it's a little bit more complicated and it took a while to figure out what to do. So I'll explain briefly what I did. In the bottom left video is the actual image that I'm getting from the video itself. And it's an RGB image. And my first step is I have to convert it into an 8-bit grayscale image. This means that it'll be a gray image where each pixel is represented between 0 and 255, where 0 is equal to black and 255 is equal to white. So once I've converted it into this 8-bit system, I look at each pixel and I do a thresholding where I set it at about 60, which I observed, and anything that's below 60, meaning that it's black, turns into a logical 1, and anything else turns into a logical 0. And the result, looking at the top screen, would be a white mouse, with or without the tail, depending on the light and that tail has been giving me issues. So once I have it converted into an image based off of zeros and ones, I perform what's known as an erode function, where it looks at those regions of contrast between the zero and one, and I chose a six by six matrix to wipe out the boundaries. So what'll happen is the mouse will shrink by three pixels on each side. And I do this because that mouse tail sometimes pops into existence and I need to get rid of it because it fools my algorithm. And so by performing this erode, it wipes out that tail. So with the eroded mouse now on this black screen, I perform OpenCV's find contours function and it finds the outline of the mouse. And it'll also find contours of other things that might be popping up. But I pick the contour with the largest areas, that being the mouse. From there, the contour is just made up of a series of points, at which point I can fit an ellipse to those points, which is what you see in the top left video. It uses a least squares algorithm to minimize the distance of each point in the ellipse to each point in the contour. And as you can see, it fits pretty well with the actual contour of the mouse. And now I use that center point of the fitted ellipse as the center point of the mouse. And from there I can track how the center point moves around. But of course to find movement we're interested in the velocity. So to do this it takes a little bit more work. Because if you can see the contours are based on the light level and sometimes they jump around real quickly. And it'll give 
the algorithm it'll make the algorithm think that it's moving really quickly and so obviously the mouse can't accelerate you know super quickly so I need to wipe out what appears as high frequency noise in a raw velocity stream and so the way that I do that is I build a little half second history of the velocity which is calculated as just how many pixels that center point has moved per frame and from there I take about a half second history and perform an FFT on it in such a way that the bins are approximately one and a half hertz which is about the maximum speed that a mouse can move so all energy below one and a half hertz is dumped into the DC FFT value and that's the value that I put as the actual velocity of the mouse at that moment and that's the value that you see in the top right graph so doing all of this has allowed me to not have the algorithm spoofed by the tail and stay relatively on the mouse all the time and also eliminate any high frequency noise in which the algorithm kind of gets tricked by the light levels in the uh, video. So, as you can see, that's about it. Thanks for watching.